Hello and welcome to this lab session. In this lesson, we will look at how to perform the ETL, that is extract, transform and load process in Microsoft Azure with the help of its data factory service. We will be looking at the overall architecture understanding of the ETL process and practically implementing it on Azure platform. In this diagram, you can see that we have the blob storage over here, which contains a CSV file for the sales record. And on the other hand, we have the SQL database table for the sales record. Both of them have the same schema. We have already seen how you can create an account storage and upload some files over there. In our case, we uploaded this sales record CSV file. Then we saw how you can create a database in the Azure SQL and create a table over there. So we have a sales record table in the SQL database. With the help of the data factory in Azure following the ETL procedure, we are interested in bringing the data set contained in this sales record CSV file present in the blob storage to the SQL database table so that you can then perform some queries and perform some analytics. For this, we need to follow a series of steps. And in Azure, this is done with the help of an integration service known as data factory. Once you are inside the data factory, the first step is to create the pipeline. A pipeline is a logical grouping of activities that together perform a task. The activities in a pipeline define actions to perform on your data. The next thing we do is create a linked service for both the source and sync. A linked service is used to connect a data store to ADF. It is very similar to a connection string in that it defines the connection information needed for ADF to connect to external resources such as blob storage or a SQL database. First, we create a linked service for the blob storage using which you can access the CSV file inside the blob storage. The CSV file will produce the source dataset which is a named view of data that simply points to or reference the data you want to use in your activities as inputs. And on the other side as well, we will create a linked service that will connect to the SQL database table. With the help of that linked service, we will be able to get the table information that is created inside the database. Finally, we will have the activity, which is the copy activity in our case, that will be responsible to copy the dataset files from the CSV inside the blob storage into the database table in SQL database. So we will be looking at all of these steps and how to perform them on the Azure platform, I will be discussing each step in this architecture when performing it practically. Here we are on the home screen of our Azure portal. In the search bar, I will search for a data factory and select this on-screen option. Here I will create a data factory. You can create from this button or from the create option over here. Let's click on the button to continue. So here as usual, we will use the Azure subscription one, which is our free tile. And then select the same resource group in which we have our other resources we previously created. Then we have the instance details. First one is the region where the data factory will be managed. We will keep the East US. Next, give it a name and this name should again be globally unique. Let's name it as sales record and short for Azure Data Factory. So we see a check mark here, which means this name is available for us. Next, select the version and here we have already selected the video, which is the latest one. Next, let's move on to the Git configuration. Here I will go with the configure Git later option. So click on next now for the network settings. And here we have the option to manage the virtual network. As of now, we are not using any of them. Let's just select the right option for the self-hosted integration runtime inbound connectivity. We will use the public endpoint so that any service can have access to the data factory and data factory can also access the other Azure services. Click on next for some advanced settings. Here we don't need any data factory encryption. Let's move to the tags. 
Here you can give your data factory a tag so that it is easy for you to manage it. This is optional and up to you and I would skip it. Let's move to the final step to review and create our data factory resource. And here are all our settings and now let's create the resource. The deployment is being initialized and it's submitting the deployment. Now the deployment is in progress. Finally, the resource is deployed with all these settings as you can see in these details. Now, let's move on to this resource to start creating the pipeline for our ETL process. So, this is the uh, resource dashboard. Here it shows the pipeline runs. Currently, there is not any as we have not created a pipeline yet. Then, there is the activity runs which gives information on the number of activities you run in the pipeline. Then there are trigger runs, the integration runtime for CPU and the integration runtime for the memory. Here we have the two options to start with. You can follow up the documentation for Azure on Data Factory or start with creating the pipelines in the author and monitor sections here. Let's go into it. So the Data Factory is loading. Here are the options that Data Factory provides. You can start with directly creating the pipeline or create a data flow. You can also create a pipeline from a list of available templates in Azure or directly start by copying the data. Configure SSIS integration, which is the SQL Server Service integration, or you can set up the code repository. You can directly start the copy activity from this option here but I would recommend starting from scratch in the author option over here as you will be using this option most of the time to edit and manage your pipeline. So the first step in our ETL architecture is to create the pipeline. Click here on the pipeline option, click on the three dots here and go to the new pipeline option. Here as you can see in our architecture this is our first step creating the pipeline. Coming back to the Azure portal, we will assign the name to our pipeline. Let's name it as blob to SQL DB. This means that using this pipeline, we will load data from blob storage to SQL database. So this makes sense. We have created the pipeline. The next step we have is to create the linked service for the blob storage that will be responsible to connect to the data source in the storage account container. So over here is the manage tab. In this manage option, you will find the option for the linked services. Click on create linked service option here. In the data store option here, we will select the Azure blob storage. Let's search for it in the tab here. Select this and click on continue. In this option here, give the linked service a name and I will go with the default name which is Azure Blob Storage 1. Let this connect via integration runtime be the auto resolved method. Then the authentication method be the account key itself. Moving on to the Azure subscription option, select the available one and I will select this. And in the subscription, it will show the available storage account names. Let's select ours. So this is the one we created previously. Let's just select it. And then we will click here on the test connections, which will verify our connection for the linked service to the storage account. So here the connection is successful. This means that the linked service is able to connect to this blob storage 155, which is in this subscription using the account key authentication method. We will just create it. Okay, so the link service is now created. Now go back to the author option. So with the help of this linked service, we will bring in the dataset metadata from the file stored in the blob storage. Select the dataset tab, click on the new dataset, select the data store from where you want to bring in the dataset. And we know it is blob storage, search for it in the bar here. Now select it and click on continue. Now we need to select the format. The format is the delimited text, which is the CSV file. 
Let's select this option and click on continue. Select the link service with the help of which you will connect and bring data from the blob storage. So this is the linked service we just created, the Azure blob storage one. Now using the browser option, locate the sales record file. First select the folder we created earlier with the name of my first container. Select it. And inside this, we will go and select the sales record 100 CSV. So you can see we have the complete file path now available. And in our dataset file, the first draw is the header. So check mark this option. And I want my schema to be imported from the connection store itself. Now click on OK to continue. You can see that the file with our name delimited text 1 is now here. It also shows the schema of the file as well. These were all our columns in this dataset. Then here is the option to preview the dataset. Using this, you can actually preview your dataset. And here is my dataset, and this is how it looks like. So we have no issues in bringing this dataset from the blob storage. Next, let's name this dataset for the source with its actual name as sales record. And here are the changes reflected in the dataset file name for the source. Next, let's move on to the next linked service that we need to create. And that is related to the SQL database. Now we need a connection to the database so that the actual dataset can be fed into the tables of our database. I will go to the manage tab to create the other link for the SQL database. Click on the new option and search here for the Azure SQL database. Here it is. Select it. And over here we are giving this linked service name as Azure SQL database 1. We will use the auto resolve integration runtime. The subscription we will use is the Azure subscription 1 in which we created the sales record database. Next, select the server name MySQLDB sales. The database name was sales record db. Then we select the authentication type, which will be the SQL authentication. So you need to give in the SQL server username and login password to let this linked service connect to the database. Now click on the test connection so that we have no issues with the connection. So the connection is successful. This means that the linked service for SQLDB was able to connect with my SQLDB sales with the help of the server credentials we provided. Let's create this linked service. Again, I will move back to this author option. This time I will be creating a new dataset table from the table inside the database we have created. And this was the previous one, which is the source. Now we will go and create a sync table where we will load all the values from this source dataset. So go over here on this option, select new dataset. Now we will select the SQL database. And click on continue. And this time we will select the Azure SQL database 1 linked service. Now we will select the table name that is inside our database. So it is the dbo.sales record table. If you want, you can edit it as well. Then we will import schema from the connection store itself. Now click on OK. Now here we have the schema for the table which we previously created in the Azure SQL database with all these data types. So now you can see that we have the source dataset as well as the sync dataset table. Let me rename the sync dataset table name and I will name it as a sales record DB. All right, the next thing we need to do is create the activity for this. So we are done with this part for blob storage and the other part for the SQL database. Now we need to create a copy activity so that we can run this complete architecture. Now let's go back to the portal and see how we can create this activity. Now for this, we will go to the author option and select this pipeline we are working on and go to this move and transform option. Here is the most common copy option. 
hold it and drag it to the workspace. If you see below, it shows the option for this activity to set up. Let's give it a name. I will name it as Sales Record CSV to Database. Then in the next tab, you need to provide the source data and the sync data sets. So we have seen in the architecture as well that this is your source where you will get a file from and then we will sync this data to the table inside the database. So here I will go to this source option and select the source data set which is this sales record with the CSV icon. Then let's move to the sync tab and here we will select our synced table in the database. This is where we will load the data. The most important part is the mapping one, where you need to see the mapping of the source and the sync dataset tables. So for this, we will click onto the import schemas option. And here it is with some errors, I guess. So you can see that the column names in the source with spaces in them had some issues while mapping it to the sync or you can say the target table. Now let's correct them. First error we have the item type. So let's search for the item type in the drop down in the source table. Now the error is gone. Same procedure I will do it for all of them. We now have successfully mapped each of these so you can see that the mapping is now perfectly fine and each of these strings will be, will be converted to their respective data type assigned while creating the table in the SQL database. By default, whenever you import the dataset as a source from CSV format in Data Factory, it makes all columns as a string data type and then using the transformation of data types, you can convert it to the required format as we are doing here. So now let's debug this architecture for the Data Factory pipeline we just created so that if any issues are found before we publish it can be sorted out. Here is the debug option, click on it. If everything is working fine, it will execute without any errors. And then we will be good to publish all in this pipeline. All right, so the debug was successful and it did not give us any error. So now we publish it. And let's do it. Here it shows all the pending changes which will be saved and published for execution. Now click on publish. So it is publishing and deploying changes to the factory. So the publication was completed successfully. Now let's move to the database to check if we have this data in the table now. Select the database SQL. Select the database we created. Now go to the query editor and log in with the credentials. Now here is the table. Let's query it to check the data set inside it. Let's select the top 1000 rows and run this query. The query succeeded and it is fetching the rows to display. And here you go, we get the dataset on query in the database. This is the same dataset file which was in the blob storage and is now available to us in our database. So this is how you perform the ETL process in Azure using the Azure Data Factory. Hope you have got a clear understanding of it and our short series of Azure would have been beneficial for you. For more details on this Azure course, please visit the description below this video.